All right, you vampires out there, this is Jyrki from the 69 Eyes, your favorite Helsinki vampire, and you're listening to Sonic Respectives. This is Scott Medina for Sonic Perspectives. We're going to have a fun talk here with Jorki. Hey, welcome from Finland. It's good to talk to you, man. Yeah, it's great to be here as a guest, even though we're we're pretty far away from each other. But, you know, we are. We let's are. have good times and let's share the vibes. It, it, it uh, yeah, it transcends location. So that's that's no problem. And yeah, technology is very weird these days, man. <laughs> it, it, it unites us, but it divides us as well. It, it does. What it, happened? What happened? It, it was supposed to unite us. But the only thing that really still unite us is rock and roll, man. That's that's one. And, and having the technology to, you know, just be able to talk to you uh, across the continents, that's one positive thing for it, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. And, and all the rockers, we should keep together, you know, keep, keep in touch with each other and, you know, keep the carry on the Johnny Thunders and the Lemmy Torch. Gene mm-hmm. Vincent's torch, you know. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Keep the spirit alive. Well, and you've been keeping it alive. I mean, look look at this band, the 69 Eyes. You're celebrating your 30th anniversary this year. How incredible is that? Oh yeah, that's that's insane. And it's like uh, I, I always have been explaining about this, like last couple of decades about the history of band and now it's even more peculiar because we're 80s band we started 1989 you know those days remember what happened then there was like uh, remember what was the movie of the summer in 1989 or do you even know? I don't know if you even was if you were born. I, I, I was, that was around. That was my decade. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Okay. <laughs> so uh, yeah. <laughs> so it was Tim Burton's Batman. Right. So right. yeah, and what happened? And then then the fall came. What was the movie then? Original uh, Pet Cemetery. Ah. Uh-huh. So you know that was the time. You know, if, if talking about movie, like how was the movie scape? Those were the yeah. movies. Right. And then. Other the sound capes was like uh, the cult, Mötley Crüe, mm-hmm. Guns N' Roses, um, Sisters of Mercy, Billy Idol, you know. Absolutely. That was yeah. that was our that was our soundscape. It was. And then yeah. you know there was like five five glammy guys in Helsinki, and we decided that the, what about starting a band? I was frustrated because. Um, you know, those days in the 80s, you were supposed to dress up like your favorite band. And, and I, I was literally looking like, and you know, like that. And mm-hmm. I was go, I was traveling around the world I, just, just for fun. Uh, I was in London or I was in New York or I was in Helsinki. And the same thing happened over and over again. People came to me like, hey, you look like a rock star. What's your band? Nice. And I didn't have a band. <laughs> and that was embarrassing. Like, uh, I don't have a band. So I, I decided decided after after that summer of 1989 that I, I need an answer so uh, we, we because, and then fall came and we actually literally started the band in in, uh, in September so we had the first rehearsal site and first of all I, I, I lured myself in like like a friendly guy I will do the, your flyers I, I'm, I was drawing comics I was a little bit known of that then so I, I said like I can draw you your you know flyers make a make logos or stuff like that I just was curious to be in the rehearsal place with the band mm. those guys were starting they were you know Start, trying to start a band and I was accidentally there or just interested in to hang out or so anything and then I tried as tempor- being a temporary singer and then all of a sudden we have a little rehearsed and all of a sudden 
was about somebody told that hey we, we could have a show uh, and and then you know i have a temporary name for the band and that was the 69 eyes so everything was temporary everything has been temporary 30 years for 30 years <laughs> look at that yeah yeah and but but you know i saw one problem so then then i'm there and then then once again somebody approaches me hey you look like a rock star what's your band <laughs> the 69 eyes and then the best pickup line ever is like hey babe do you want to come to see our band <laughs> I can put you to the guest list. So you know, those days it was it was it worked like magic. Yeah. I don't know how it would be these days, but uh, you know, like that that was the that was the main goal. I wanted to. I, I felt stupid because I didn't have a band, and then I have a gang. I have like these four other guys. We were like a gang. So if I went to rock bar, the guy in the door said like, "Yeah, your bandmates are already there in your usual table." You know that was cool. Nice. Or or somebody said, "I just saw your bandmates around here." Right. Or or asked me, "Is is the whole band here?" Because I just saw the bass player very drunk or something like that. So you know. That was something what I needed in my life. And then, you know, uh, of course, getting popularity among girls. And uh, that was that was cool. And of course, they, then the music was there as well, which was became more and more important, which which is now the, why, why we are doing this great to be creative and so on. But I like to talk about these early uh, reasons to start a band because I like to have them still there. Mm-hmm. I mean, I don't... <laughs> Uh, there's enough like a, like a, like how would I say? There's enough talks of from very professional musicians of this and that. I like to talk about this youthful adventure which have been taking 30 years of my life, and I'm very happy at the moment. I'm 50 years old, and I have a rock and roll. I played 30 years in a rock and roll band. If I was 50 years old and I have played three months in a rock and roll band, that would be kind of a other story. But this, with with this age and, and this legacy behind, that's cool. Yeah. Everything's good. Yeah, you've I got... feel great and uh, great yeah. and it's getting actually, the, the, I'm, I'm trying to ask from the people around me if there's any left or, or or whoever listens to my rants like like am i just imagining but things are actually getting well with with our band has always been getting more and more interesting or something's happening differently or even better all the time so as a band i think um, uh, we are at our best definitely live wise if you come to see us on, on stage we're like we're never being this tight well we have rehearsed 30 years so we should be tight yeah. but you know and then we have the legacy of songs that people come to listen to people have listened to us like 10 years 20 years and then on the on the, on the other hand we just are about to release a new record which is our 12th um, and uh, I think it's sounds fresh it doesn't sound like tired old band Mm -hmm. and on the other hand it's getting kind of interesting as well like uh all of a sudden a lot of our contemporary bands have gone artists are no longer with us uh somebody's got to do with do with you know do this but uh, uh we're we're happy to continue the you know continue this as we always done well you you started off with you know just mentioning how things were kind of temporary well yeah the name was was just temporary there and then it stuck for 30 years and the band members i mean you've had pretty much the same band members almost the entire time what's what's the secret to that longevity of everybody staying together uh yeah well i think it's a whole gang point you know where we're more like it's lifestyle it's it's gang and it was never you know um we didn't put up the band to be, a, you know, like a business, yeah. you know, like uh, Gene Simmons talks about uh, band as business and it, it, it's interesting when it works that way. But for us, it was deeper thing. Uh, our expectations were totally different than uh, making it our, you know, job. I wouldn't call being in the 16 on ice as a job. It's it's of course it it it's been over the years as, and as we sell you know like over a million records. It's, it's been a profitable for uh, some people, even sometimes for us. But it's deeper than that. It's just the urge of you know 
play rock and roll and being inspired by the, you know, like once you got beaten by that, you know, whatever it is. For me, me it was like actually as we are speaking, is is this is the. It's Friday, 16th of August, and and this same date in 1977, uh, Elvis Aaron Presley left the planet, mm. and uh, then you know those same same time, I I saw the funeral from TV as a kid, and I was wondering like what's going on, like who is this guy, How, why why all these people are like mourning, who who was this guy? Because I just saw a movie of his. On, on TV just a couple of you know weeks before and it was strange because the guy was a boxer and and after, during during some boxing match he started to sing and I was like what is this and my mother told me like oh it's American artist he's called Elvis and uh, the movie was actually called Kid Callahan mm-hmm. so and then a couple of weeks later in the news in a, in a national news, there's this funeral, the same guy I just, you know, knew a little after that movie. And I was wondering how come this guy is so important? And then I discovered rock and roll straight up, you know. And, um, you know, so I was, I was, I, and ever since that, I'm here and I'm, 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 uh, you know, I got bitten by that. By that thing, whatever it is, yes. like the spirit, spirit Elvis, every spirit. <laughs> uh, and let's go on that too deep. But you know what I mean. So you know whatever inspired you to be a rocker, it, mm-hmm. it's still there, and and you know like and it should be there, and it's still the same vibe, and it's it's deeper than you know like uh, uh, sometimes I guess, especially in the metal world uh, these days, uh, it, it's more. It sometimes it's a business and you change workers or you know head of office there or something like that. But we're we're closer to you know like a gang of guys and you you if you leave you leave with your boots on. Right, <laughs> right. Over all those decades, uh, would you say that your audience has evolved and changed as well? Uh, well, when we started, um, uh, we were like. Our audience looked like Rocky Horror Picture Show leftovers. It was like really 80s audience, you know, like glam people and goths. And then, you know, like all the all through the years, well, you know, like uh, it, it has been changing. And especially here in Finland, once we it took us 10 years to develop our sound, how you know it these days. We were trying a lot of other things. We've always were interested in just to sound like a like a contemporary new band even though our you know uh influences were uh you know like in the early days of rock and roll or even even johnny thunders or things like this but we mm-hmm. wanted to, wanted to sound new and then it took 10 years once we got this sound which which is you know like wh- how you know us now so that as that really took us on radio in, in Finnish radio here, and then we became like uh, like really famous here in our own country, and all of a sudden records were selling platinum like back in those days and gold, and right. and still today, if you open up a local rock radio here in Finland, there is really station that play all the rock music here in Finland. So nice. there's like a classic songs with, with your classic uh, ZZ Top Shop dressed man, but there's also, you know, Lost Boys by the 69 Eyes over there. Or even if you actually go to um, to uh, LA, uh, if you go to Rainbow Bar and Grill, they play uh, Guns N' Roses, Mutley Crew, and then there's yeah. 69 Eyes Lost Boys there. Uh-huh. So, you know, at some point, we reached that level that our music really started to matter and reached a lot of, like wider audience. So here in Finland, we're a mainstream band. If you come to see us here, you might be, and, and sometimes it happens that people come here, travel all the way, then they come up with their breast, their their wildest uh, Halloween outfit, and then they come to our show and everybody else looks like in Finland that they came to see like John Fogarty, you know? <laughs> <laughs> so, so it's like, a, it's like some countries we are dark, sinister, 
cult band mm -hmm. and some like in Finland we're mainstream band and we're we're like uh, fucking vampires but they they like it like that you yeah. know but it doesn't mean that you have to dress up in black <laughs> coming to see us here in Finland you know so the but the audience is basically actually grown up with us we all every time we have a new record there so of course in the, the front row when you go on stage Uh, of the new record there's the front rows are always like fresh brand new young audience girls and guys who have dressed up first time to their rock show uh -huh. you know maybe secretly change their clothes after leaving home or something like that right and and then there's the audio older audience and then but but it's like um unfortunately or fortunately um i'm not especially very Uh, inspired by the fact but we are living of times of talking when you talk about music and being being in the band or being a musician or artist we are talking about algorithms right mm. so if I check out our algorithms they tell me that our the, the people who are listening our music they 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 are not passive. They are not passive listeners. Passive listener means like uh, you are listening to a summer 2019 playlist, and then it's it's great stuff. But there's a lot of artists that you will never know who they were, and yeah. you will you like the songs, but you probably don't have time to check out even who was who was the artist, and most likely you don't go to see their shows or well return to their music or something like that so uh, the six and nine is not a playlist band so the algorithms tell so we are a band that people specifically uh, specifically go to listen to and uh, so th there's there are people who have been listening to us like 10 or 20 years you know so it's pretty much the same audience it's like it's like a vampire family around the world and that's good yeah that's cool And of course, everybody's welcome, and especially fresh blood is always welcome. <laughs> But that, that's our case, and, and I'm, I'm good with that. You yeah. know? Well, now you've got something new coming up for them to listen to as well. Your, your 12th album, West End, comes out, uh, and what makes this one special for you? I think it's like uh, it, the 12th sounds great, crazy, actually. I, I'm so, I, I don't think it's... Is it like embarrassing or like maybe no, no, we no. actually have to have, we have to do a new record because it, then it's our 13th album. Yeah, there you go. Yep. <laughs> so, so Beatles did 12. And seriously, I've been thinking like, should we like secretly not to tell anyone and don't, please don't tell anyone. But I, I, I've been thinking like, hold on, Beatles did 12 albums. Would this be yeah. the last album for the six and nine? Should we like <laughs> follow, follow the legacy this way? But I, at the moment, I don't feel like that because I'm the new album is is very uh i've been saying just for fun in the interviews that our previous album was our worst record and this is our best ever wow just yeah. be, just because because just because this is like there this this rocks it has a lot of cool guitars it, they they the guitarists play a lot of time to get the guitars exactly how they want it so mm -hmm. it's very carefully crafted in that sense uh And it, it sounds fresh, it sounds timeless, like our records always do. And I think the world is somehow strangely ready to, you know, to, you know, to listen to us again for a while, you know, mm -hmm. for a while. I mean, it's, it's been very, it's always untrendy to play rock and roll, but it's good times right now. Come on, Stray Cats did a new album. I know. Uh, Black yeah. Keys did a new album. Rack and mm -hmm. Tears did a new record. So rock and roll is obviously back. Yep. So, you know, I, we are here too. We're, we're here meanwhile as well. So, but who cares? Let's enjoy the ride. It's the best ride by far right now. And even though it's your 12th album, you, I do see you, you managed to have the release date be on a Friday the 13th in September. Oh, yeah. 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 That, was, that, that was really hard to convince everybody that that has to be the date. Right. Nice. <laughs> nice. What, what's behind the title, West End? Um, it's it's like a cool two words, West, you know, go go West, young man. Mm -hmm. I love the West. Yep. And then the end, that's always near. Mm -hmm. So it's just cool two words together. They work. They they maybe they predict something about the future. May, they maybe they tell about the present day, what's going on. It's just 
dark, nice imaginary. And on the other hand, um, as as we you already revealed, you've been around as long as I've I've been nearly at least. So uh, remember the early '80s. Uh, those were super seriously darker times than now. You know, millennials are like whining, like, "Oh, this horrible the news and this this." Times are really dark now. Come on, man. In the early 80s, we were living in the constant fear of nuclear war. Mm -hmm. And, you know, that was all the time everywhere. And then, you know, that's why we started dressed up in black. And that, you know, created, uh, that atmosphere created like a gothic rock and all the dark wave and all that back then. So, but, you know, the dark times then, they, they created a lot of other things. It's the same as now. So I like to see it like like this now. Like, okay, we are living pretty chaotic, well, extremely chaotic and and uh, unpredictable times. So I just wanted to get some, you know, like um, inspiration from that and create something around that theme. So I think that that's that's my contribution for for these present day times. West End is like uh, something I get inspired by. What's going on all the time? You know, just to Maybe, maybe it's it's a cool title. If it gives some thought for somebody, uh, that's also good. But it's just mainly a cool title for a rock album, dark rock album in 2019. Yeah, yeah, I, I agree. There's, uh, you know, definitely a theme of, of films that run in your life and then with the band as well. And, and I, so I'm assuming on, on the new album that the last house on the left, that song has a connection to the, yeah, cla- to the classic Wes Craven horror movie. Yeah, absolutely. And uh, actually the Wes Craven has been around with the 16 on ice, like always our, our, one of the first songs we ever wrote, which is, which was our f- second single, if anybody cares, like in 1990, uh, was, so, there was a song called, and still is, if you check out from, from sources, uh, the song called the, uh, the Hills Have Eyes, that was mm-hmm. like Wes Craven movie. Yeah. So it was time to get, get done his first movie, <laughs> The Last House on the Left, and from 1972, and also the remake is really really good so i just i heard the like uh, instrumental demo of the song and strangely i don't know where the title just came to my mind and i i always loved the title and i just forced it into the song then i ran into wednesday 13 um which I've known since the murder those days, but I haven't, and we've done numerous of tours all over the world, but I haven't seen him for a decade. So mm. I ran into him, uh, I think at the Whiskey of Go-Go and, uh, in, in Hollywood, and I, I said like, hey man, we haven't done anything for, a, for such a long time, let's, let's do something. Like, like, would you like to be on our next album? And he said, yeah, man, and I had the song, and I wanted him to finish the lyrics. I had had the oh, chorus, nice. first verse, and I said like, "Hey, let, let's please write it like along the storyline of of the last house on the left." And then in the end of the song, to go it like that, we need a female voice. And uh, obvious choice was uh, a Calico Cooper. Uh, the singer from Bisto Blanco, but also has a history with the 69 Eyes. We filmed a music video for uh, Never Say Die, uh, some 15, everything happened 15 years ago, 2007, <laughs> something in LA. And there's a scene that the, the 69 Eyes is playing in the, in the, in the middle, of, middle of the night in, by the LA river, and a lot of punks and glam people are, you know, dancing around us. And year after that somebody pointed out like hey did you know that you have alice cooper's daughter in your video and we're like what and it was like calico alice cooper's daughter was jumping around in our video and so she's part of the family she was qualified she did did also like great job on the song so it's and also to add there like a sherry on the top there's donnie filth on that song as well right donnie filth from cradle of filth uh and no donnie filth from demo borg sorry donnie filth from cradle of filth <laughs> and uh you know it's just like an old team up uh horror punk song for everybody in for halloween 2019 perfect perfect yeah you all, all good time fun and you know among friends 
Exactly. That's what it's about. That's so good. You um, And you also released a solo album not too long ago. Uh, did taking the time to do that change the way that you approached the 69 Eyes when you returned to record? Oh, yeah, that's a, that's a, that's a great question. Uh, yeah, the solo record was done um, by by the by uh, and and with uh, the producer Johnny Lee Michaels, who has been working for us for right. such a long time. Yeah. But we're always limiting his. Um, he's a he's a keyboard keyboardist and a composer and um, you know like arrange arranging things like from that sense. So we're always limiting him. Uh, the new Six Eyes album is very guitar driven, but that might be which is good. That might be because he used all his, you know, like perversions for keyboards on my solo record. Yeah. All the songs were written by him and he played all the instruments and also so so there was no limitations how many how much keyboards or orchestrations or strings or anything he can use. So he used all everything he wanted on my solo album. So I, I hope that that sort of like emptied him. So now for the new album, uh, you know, we, we didn't have to tell, like, hey, get those keyboards away. <laughs> there, there, there's more guitars on that, and that, yeah. that serves a purpose as well. Right. You know? He got it out of his system with, with your... Yeah, yeah, exactly, exactly. Nice. <laughs> um, Everything happens for the purpose. And, and I had to do the solo record, really, because I just wanted to go to play in the States. The 69 Eyes hadn't been there for a decade, but I love the road in America. You know the original Jack Kerouac road, being on the road. You know that's that's my life. That's what I want for my life. So yeah. I wanted to get on the road. So I put out the solo album. I put up a little band from LA music musicians from bands like LA Guns, Faster Pussycat, you know, and Devil Driver. And we did some tour in the West Coast, and that that really was important me personally. I bet. And then you know, like that also. You know, open up the door to bring the 69 eyes back on the American map. Yeah. So you know, everything happens for the purpose. But you know, everything happens. Nothing has anything to do with like I already said this curse word, which is not a curse word if you ask from uh, Gene Simmons. Business. Everything happens just because you know we are rockers and and we're outlaws and we love to play rock and roll from our heart. Yeah, sweet. Well, let's play a, a little rock and roll for the listeners we want to introduce them to. If they haven't heard any of the new tracks you've been releasing, we want to close the interview by playing Black Orchid. Do you want to uh, set that song up for, for the listeners a bit? Oh, yeah. All right. Here's Jurke from the 69 Eyes, your favorite Helsinki vampire. We have a new album coming out. We currently have a new single, which is called Black Orchid. And telling a little bit about the lyrics. Um, I love the music video of Sisters of Mercy uh, called Dominion. Check that out from Google that. Google Ch Sisters of Mercy Dominion. Check the video out. There's a guy, Andrew Eldridge, the singer, dressed up in white, and he's a world traveler traveler in a in a exotic places so i sort of pictured a new adventure for that character and wrote lyrics from that character's perspective and this adventure happens in singapore and then there's a exotic dancer she's called black orchid we'll get to that song in just a moment and yorki thank you so much for uh, talking no with problem us. sir been fantastic hearing pleasure. your stories and we're really psyched for the new album to be coming out next month on yes friday the 13th of september hope to see you guys soon and remember rock and roll is never too loud